Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to teach you how to perform basic matrix operation in Python using NumPy library. So I'm going to teach you how to define, how to add, multiply, how to invert matrices, and how to save and load them from files. As always, I have created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. So if you don't have time to watch this video, you can simply read this post and you can basically learn everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given to in description below. Naturally, the first thing I'm going to teach you is how to define matrices in Python. So let us define these three matrices A, B and C in Python. What you can see over here is my spider Python graphics user interface. I'm using spider because it's very convenient and for example if you want to execute certain code blocks you can just select them right click and run cell okay and the nice thing about this environment it, it uh, very much resembles MATLAB so if you like MATLAB you will find this Python environment uh, very useful okay since I executed certain code blocks I need to erase my workspace you can do that by typing reset and click on yes and the nice Python command that I liked is whose and after this command we obtain the message interactive namespace is empty meaning that the workspace is empty okay so let's define a B and C matrices well first step is to import the numpy library we imported it numpy as NP if you don't have this library installed you can simply click on start CMD and you can click pip install numpy and uh, in my case uh, requir requirement is already satisfied so I don't need to install numpy if you don't have numpy on your computer you will see a nice uh, screen here uh, saying that numpy is being installed okay after importing numpy let us define the matrices so how how the matrices are defined basically in this case a matrix that looks like this one two three four is defined like this so we define matrices row wise we use these brackets over here to define rows we separate rows by commas and here's our matrix a b and c we are calling the function array and we're specifying the argument the whole matrix as, an, as the argument and let us execute this great and if you click here on A here's your A here's your B here's your C there is another method for defining matrices and I will explain this in the second part of this video okay another good strategy when defining matrices is to specify the type the data type of the numbers for example if you simply write one two three four five and six you can convince yourself that basically uh, Python kind of assigns integers so the entries are integers however sometimes it's uh, very beneficial and it may be it's a good suggestion to specify the data type since you might import this data into another software such as MATLAB so I'm going to define the matrix of doubles and here you can type G D type in, or, in order to convince yourself that basically G consists of doubles or you can simply type whose and you can see that G now has doubles as its entries so what is the next uh, matrix that we want to define of course they are identity and zero matrices so we define uh, matrices such as identity and zero matrix uh, using a very similar notation to MATLAB notation. We will write NP dot identity. We call the identity function. Here is an argument. We specify the matrix size. So this is a square matrix. And by executing this, we will obtain identity matrix. You want to find a zero matrix, a matrix of zero, we can do that in a similar ma manner, calling the function zeros, and we specify the shape, four by four, and you can see your zero matrix here. Okay, so let us now learn how to select rows and columns. 
Here how we do that uh, to uh, watchers, to people who watch this video, who are familiar with MATLAB, this notation is very familiar, you might be very familiar with this notation. So this notation tells us that we are going to select zero row, that is first row since Python index entries of, a matrix, of matrices or vectors from zero. For example, in MATLAB, the first entry is equal to 1. However, the first entry here is equal to 0. So this, this specific code line will select the first row of the matrix C. Okay. So here is the first row of the matrix C, and here is our matrix C. So it's 1, 2, 3. Okay. If you want to select the first column, we do it in a similar manner. So here is the first column. Let us see that. Perfect. This is the first column. If we want to select the first two rows, we specify start from zero, take the zeroth row, and end at first row, or the row number one. So start from zeroth row and end at row number one, meaning that this, is, this becomes one and a nice thing or maybe confusing thing about Python is when you say from zero, to 2, it actually selects 0 and first row. Okay, so let us see this. Here it is. It's basically the first two rows of the matrix C. Okay, similarly, if you want to select sub-blocks, we can do that by following a similar strategy. 1, 2, 4, 5. 1, 2, 4, 5. And we can also use the backward notation. Here, uh, this means that we are starting from the second, from the end row until the end row and the second from the end row until the end row. And let's see what do we get. Basically, we are obtaining this, this basically block. Actually, I made a mistake here. This is the second from the end until the end row and second from the end until the end column. Just a small correction. Okay, we can get the shape of a matrix and we can obtain numbers of rows and columns of matrices by simply typing a dot shape. It's a two by two matrix. We can also extract the row number or the column numbers like this. Okay, how to transpose matrices? Well, there are two ways. We can just type matrix dot transpose. We're calling the method transpose or some overloaded operator behind this command and or we can type np.transpose we can explicitly call the function transpose okay the next step is to learn matrix addition well matrix addition is straightforward let's say this is our matrix a this is our matrix b and we can simply define the matrix d a plus B by simply writing D is equal A plus B. Okay, so here's our D matrix. Now, here is a pitfall. Multiply two matrices. How do we multiply two matrices? Someone might simply write D is A star B. Okay, and let's see what happens if we, if we type this. Let's see A, let's see B, and let's see D. Okay, so what happened here? The product here is equal to 5. So it's 1 times 5 is equal to 5. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So this is not the classical matrix multiplication. This is element-wise multiplication. Okay, be careful. If you write A star B, this is element-wise multiplication. To correctly perform matrix multiplication, we need to write a dot, then dot function b, and this is the correct way. And let's do that, and let's see the result. Okay, so, and you can convince yourself that basically this matrix d correct is actually a times b. Okay, here's another way for defining matrices. Matrices 
in Python or using NumPy library can be defined in two ways. The first way is to use the NP array and if you type in whose you can see the data type is ND array, right? Another way is to call the function matrix. So you can simply call the function matrix and you can define the matri matrices. Now, if you type whose, you will find that basically A1, B1, and now are of basically matrix data type. So addition works in the same way as in the case of and the array objects, so A1 plus B1, and you can simply convert from one form to another, that is from and the array to matrix form by simply typing NP as matrix ED. However, I didn't define ED here, so I can simply, for example, define ED is equal to A, and then I can perform this operation and you can see now what's happening over here. You can see that ED is a made of matrix type. Okay. Block matrices. Block matrices are defined by typing np.block. And you can specify the blocks inside of these brackets over here. So let us define a block matrix. And let's see how this block matrix looks like. So here's our block matrix. The first three by three matrix is zeros. The second block of three uh, matrix, uh, three by three identity matrix. Uh, the block over here is minus identity matrix. And the last matrix is the matrix C. And you can convince yourself, here's your C, however it's minus C. Okay, matrix inversion. Well, in, in order to perform matrix inversion, we need to import from NumPy, uh, linear algebra module we need to import inverse function so by importing this function we can simply call it and we can define matrix inverse let's see a inverse in order to verify that this is actually an inverse matrix we can simply multiply it by a matrix and let's see what happens here you're obtaining a, a basically an identity matrix this is close to zero this is the machine precision and you can do the same thing over here and again you're obtaining zeros here okay let us now see how to save and load matrices from files of course there are many ways how to save and load matrices from files so the first matter that i'm going to explain is to save a matrix in a dot mat format such that you can for example import it in matlab and to load the matrix from the same type of the file so to do so, I need to invoke or I need to import the scientific Python library and I need to I need the module dot IO input output. I need to I need a function from this module save mat. Similarly, I need load mat. So I'm going to import these two functions and I'm going to define the matrix G matrix of double. Here it is. You can type G over here. And in order to save matrices in the format that can be imported in MATLAB, you need to define a dictionary. I'm not going to go over this data structure right now. A dictionary is basically a tuple. You are having a, basically a name and a value and or index or key, however it's being called. And let's define a dictionary. Here it is. And let's type mdic. Oops. Let's see what do we get. We are obtaining G and we obtain the value of it's an, it's an array, it's a matrix. And how to do so? Well, I'm going to simply save the matrix to file. I'm going to type save mat, give the file name matlab matrix.mat and give the dictionary name. And here it is. Now, uh, you should be careful over here because uh, this Python environment will save your matrix in this folder. Here you need to specify the path, right? So it will automatically save everything in this folder and you can see it over here. Okay, now let us see, let us go to MATLAB and let's see, can we import this matrix? So I'm going to type in MATLAB, MATLAB, matrix.mat. And let's see what happens. 
and let's type whose and here it is here's our G matrix and this is how you can import for example data to MATLAB from Python and then you can simply load matrix from a file here I'm going to specify uh, the file name and load mat function I'm going to call load mat function and let's see what do we get at the end of the day this is loaded G here is the loaded G and obviously loaded G is equal to G okay there is another more elegant and probably faster way to save and load the matri matrices from files we can we can use the built-in uh, numpy function save so we can simply type np.save and we need to specify the file name uh, you can see this extension npy that's the file name and this is the name of the matrix so you can simply do that and as the result in this folder you will see this file it's an npy file it's not being recognized by windows as a as a python file however you can simply load it by typing g2 np.load and here it is here's your loaded one here's g and you can simply uh, check that these two matrices are equal to each other by simply saying print g equal equal g2 so this is a logical operation it's basically you're asking if uh, basically these two matrices are equal you should get true 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 if everything is correct so we're getting true 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 meaning that this entry is equal to this entry this entry is equal to this entry etc okay that will be all for today i hope that you like this video if you like this video please support my channel or subscribe thank you very much and have a nice day